Hello Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to do this seabird in three steps. The first step is always working from light to dark and we are going to put in our background layer. The sky is nice and soft. There is a, a very light sea and a very, very light mountains off in the distance and so I'm laying all that down wet on wet and instead of masking out the bird I really want him to have soft edges and so I'm just taking my tissue paper to uh, lighten his body. Putting in some of those soft waves Some of the colors I used for the ocean were marine blue and the sky was manganese blue. I also used some indigo. And for the lagoon part that the bird is in, I am dry brushing to give it this certain texture, lightening that up a little bit lifting for some of the waves and I used a flat brush to put in that mountain range and it does have a hard edge. Now on our second layer we're going to work on the foreground. I'm going to get my first layer of paint on the bird and on the mossy rock structures in this little lagoon that the bird is in. So I'm going to do the bird's body wet on wet and using a little quinacridone red. There are some sun-kissed areas on this bird that is lighter, um, warmer colors and some purples. I'm using some cobalt blue as well. So basically when you are painting a white animal, you're basically painting all the shadowed areas you see in order to get a three-dimensional look for highlights and shadows. Now I'm just lifting a little bit of that blue paint off of the areas where the rocks are going to go. So I really loved the leaf green to use as my first layer on these mossy rocks. I love the bright color. And working wet on wet, I'm charging those areas that I just did with some browns whatever I have in my palette. You could also neutralize your green with a little bit of red to make your own brownie, muddy color to serve as the shadows on these rocks. And I'm putting these darker tones at the bottom of the rocks. The uh, pretty sure I used some sepia. I also used raw sienna because there are some gold tones in there. But notice how that just really makes them pop by adding that. So while the rocks are still wet, I am still laying down color. The more I lay down, the more it really pops into the foreground. So I want to get as much as I can get done on my foreground layer in this second step. The more details I add, the more realistic it looks. 
I'm using indigo to put the color onto the bird's legs. And I'm using cadmium yellow for the yellow parts of the bird. Now my third layer is my detail layer. And I put a little bit of that yellow mixed with white to dampen down that yellow color. I'm making the foreground waves uh, darker. And so I'm adding all those details into the ocean. I'm lifting so I could have light and dark areas. And now there's lots of ripples in this little tide pool that the bird is standing in. And so I'm adding in all those little details as well. A number eight or a number six brush um, the Black Velvet Series brush that has a very fine tip is what I'm using for these details. And for the bird's face and feet, I'm using a size 00 brush. I'm taking some straight indigo and adding in the shadows and the dark areas on his legs. So the detail layer, we are working a wet on dry watercolor technique. It's really about adding some realism and the details also shape the bird quite a bit. His legs look a lot more three-dimensional now that we added the shadows. I'm working on the beak and that extra coat is really starting to define this bird. Putting in the darker feathers and shaping my bird with these glazes. I'm using a number four black velvet series brush. The tip is very fine and it is also serving as a detail brush. Now I'm adding a lot of indigo under the wing and coming in with a clean brush to soften the edge on one side. And you sign your painting. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks for watching.